We have some amazing news today guys. The PSVR has been selling like crazy and has sold out everywhere. I wonder what got people so interested all of a sudden beep. It certainly wasn't you. Minions, listen closely. We will fly high above the PlayStation World Studio and you will drop the bombs on my command. This is going to be a day to remember. Aces of the Luftwaffe Squadron Review for the PlayStation 4. Let's begin! This is a vertically scrolling shoot em up game. You are in control of a squadron and must take down enemy planes. The game has you flying over a wide range of environments, including forests, cities, canyons and more. The screen can look very hectic at times, due to the colourful backgrounds and bullets. Although the colours can slightly blend in, everything that you must shoot does have a black outline, which really does make the process of eliminating enemies much easier. When the squadron flies upwards, the backgrounds do become slightly blurred, causing everything to pop out slightly more. It would have been nice to have also had a blur on the background when the planes fly lower to the ground. When you destroy an enemy plane, it gets set alight and spirals out of control. Visually, this does look great, but with so much going on screen, it can be hard to tell if you need to carry on shooting or not, especially as sometimes no sound effect is heard. You do certainly get used to how many bullets it takes for one to go down though, which does eliminate the issue. As you would expect from this type of game, you will be weaving in and out of enemy fire. The problem is that in a very small selection of levels, the enemy's firing patterns don't give you a chance to move out of the way, and you will take damage. Like I said though, this doesn't happen on too many levels, and it is usually your fault if you get hit, thanks to how well the plane's movement handles. The bosses are a completely different story though. You always do get chance to dodge, and learning their attack patterns is vital. They really are the star of the game, not only because of their cool mechanical looking designs, but also because like all amazing boss battles, they do have different stages of forms and attacks. They really are quite different from one another. You also get some mini boss battles in other stages, which are just as fun. Each stage comes with a secondary objective for you to complete. You may need to destroy a certain amount of enemies, rescue civilians or drop off supply drops. These two do play out the same though, as you must hover over them for a brief timer to go down. There is also a side mission where you must stay out of spotlights. These side missions do prevent each mission from becoming too repetitive. The story comes in the form of radio talk and incredibly short animations after you complete each chapter. I did find the pilot's dialogue to not be all that interesting. Luckily you can skip the chatter by holding down the circle button, which is very welcome, especially on second playthroughs, as these chunks of radio talk can be quite long. It's okay, I just have to keep cool for a while. The thing that is engaging with each character is their weaknesses, as it adds another gameplay element. One pilot gets sick, which requires you to move the squadron slowly, otherwise you will start taking damage. Another enters rage mode, don't get in his way when this happens, as he will instantly take a life. And the last one falls asleep, so whilst they're out of action, you must defend them. These really do add another layer of intensity, and luckily, they don't happen too often. If they did, it would have become quite annoying. Enemy planes often drop medals, which you will want to collect to level up. Surprisingly, the game does include quite an extensive upgrade system. Leveling up rewards you with tokens which can be spent on new abilities. Some of these abilities are incredibly useful too, as they enable a whole new attack, such as a bomb that obliterates everything on screen. You can even get a supply drop, which gives you a weapon power up. Not only can you unlock new abilities for your pilot, you can also use your tokens on your teammates. There really is a balancing act here, and finding the best combination of upgrades really does help with some of the bosses near the end of the game. Some of the upgrades are locked until you complete a chapter, so it does somewhat limit the customization process, as you will most likely have all of that chapter's upgrade by the end of it. But which ones you unlock first during a chapter 
is completely up to you. You can even change each pilot's plane. Each plane comes with its own abilities, like movement speed. New ones are unlocked for beating the main boss at the end of a chapter. The difficulty level you are playing on does change what types of planes drop too, so there is an incentive to beat them again on different difficulties for better planes. The game includes three difficulty modes, normal, hard and extreme. You must first complete the game on normal or hard to unlock the extreme mode. The game can be played with up to four players, but the multiplayer side is couch co-op only, and there is no online. When playing with friends, the enemy difficulty is increased slightly, but in my opinion, not enough. Some levels that I found hard when playing solo was a complete breeze when playing with a friend. Although it is co-op, at the end of each level, each player's scores are displayed, so it does have a head-to-head -head element to it, and I'm sure there will be a few friendly arguments if the game over screen appears, as the players do share lives. The game took me just over three and a half hours to beat on the normal difficulty, and the game does come with a platinum trophy. In total, there are 25 trophies to achieve. There is eight bronze, 10 silver, six gold, and one platinum. If you're going for the platinum, it is going to take an incredible amount of time, as there is a trophy for unlocking every ability for every pilot, which will demand a lot of grinding for medals to level up. There is a trophy for completing the game on hard, but not for completing it on extreme, which is a bit of a shame. If you're not a fan of this genre of game, this game doesn't really do enough different that will change your mind, but if you do enjoy these hectic dodging experiences, you'll likely have a good time, especially with the quite in depth upgrade system. The difficulty is a bit all over the place though. On the normal setting, it isn't until the start of chapter 4 that the game really starts to give a good challenge, so if you have a lot of experience with scrolling shoot 'em ups you may want to begin your first playthrough on hard. The story may not be that interesting, but the boss battles are very engaging and the couch co-op is sure to give players a few hours of fun. This isn't good beep. Why are they following his command? What? You entered their mind? Talk sense into them, B! No! What are you doing? I am your king! Beep t-shirts are now available. Check the link in the description of this video for more information. As always, please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more comical PlayStation-related content.